and are dismissed uh, now. I'd like to recognize uh, Josh and Bethany Carney. They're here. Uh, Josh is the pastor over at First Baptist in Elwood. Did you guys have an anniversary? Or are you just doing this on your... Just a weekend away. They have three children under the age of six, right? So I asked them, I said, what did you guys do on your getaway? They said, we slept. <laughs> right, that's what you do. Now, when I do anniversary getaways, I'm often required to go to antique stores. That's what Christy likes to do. Yeah, so... <laughs> But, but we do this, and, and, and this, is, uh, this is actually part of the sermon here, so we're leading into this. Uh, but we go to these antique stores, and we browse around, and I enjoy it too. I'm just joking about that, but, but I enjoy it too because you just find some really cool, cool stuff. I showed you guys a few weeks ago this postcard that I bought, didn't I, from 1935 that referred to Bethlehem as Palestine before Israel became a nation. I found that in an antique store. And uh, not too long ago, I think about a year ago, I found an old phone in uh, an antique store. And, and I bought it for like eight bucks, it like it was from maybe the 40s or whatever. And I came home and, whoa, I came home and I turned uh, the phone over, I found the model number, and I punched it into Google. And I found out that this phone was issued by the military during World War II. And it probably sat on a desk somewhere um, and didn't have a dialer or anything. You just picked it up and it would go straight to, to some lines. Lots of cool things in an antique stores right? But as you walk in an antique store, I don't know about you, but I'm struck by the fact of, that, that there's all this stuff in there, right? All this stuff. And you see furniture and books and pictures of Elvis and all kinds of things in there, right? And you wonder, how did this stuff get here? And at one point, did people actually find this stuff valuable, right? And, and you look around and, and, and it's everywhere, the walls are, are filled with this stuff. And, you know, it's kind of cool going in there. I think why I like going in there is because you see something. And it reminds you of, of a distant memory, right? You say, you know, oh, my grandmother had dishes just like that, right? Or that's the toy that I used to play with when I was a kid. And, and if the toys you're playing with are in antique stores, I guess that means you're getting old, right? <laughs> so, but that's what happens. And we see all this stuff. And this morning, our text has to do with stuff, with stockpiles. Scripture calls them, and the NIV translates them, treasures, if you will. So we're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 6 together this morning. Bethany, or Brittany, God. yeah, it's weird because Brittany, like for some reason, Bethany, like stuck in my mind when you first came here, and it won't get, won't get out. So Brittany is here. Brittany's going to read Matthew chapter 6. Um, we're going to be looking at verses 19 through 21 together. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. All right. Thank you, Brittany. Now, let me invite you, I didn't invite you to open your Bibles ahead of time, but, but find a Bible, open it up to Matthew 6, and we're going to be, be looking at this text together this morning and look at the, looking at the words of this text. I enjoy particularly shorter texts like this because we can dig into them a little bit deeper. We can kind of see what the words mean, kind of understand what Jesus is getting at here. Now, let me set up just a bit of context before we dive in this morning to, to this chapter or to, this, to these verses. In Matthew chapter 5, you might remember this, but in Matthew chapter 5, we have the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus is teaching the crowd, and so you remember that sermon. And when you move into Matthew chapter 6, you have kind of this collage of teachings by Jesus. He's talking about spiritual disciplines. He's talking about prayer. He's talking about fasting. And he's just kind of giving what you might call kind of instructions on how to live in the kingdom of God. We see this over and over again. These are instructions on, on how we live if we're going to follow Jesus. And so, by the time we get to verse 19, we find Jesus talking about how we store our treasures, if, if you will. But again, uh, we're going to find out in a minute, it's more than just our coins and our dollars here that Jesus is talking about. Now, in this verse, Jesus gives, first of all, a negative. He tells us to, to what not to do with our treasures, and then he gives a positive. Look, look with me. Here at verse 19. He says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. Now, 
You've probably heard a sermon or two. How many of you have ever heard this scripture before? Raise your hand. Yeah, it's a very familiar passage, isn't it? You've probably heard a sermon or two on it. And most of the time, you think of this treasure as being like a treasure chest, right? That has what in it? Gold, money, coins, dollars, that kind of stuff. And many times, we apply this simply to money. But I want you to see in the text that, that it is far deeper than that. Jesus tells us, first of all, to not store, and look at the words here, look at the Greek words for, for, for this here. The word store up is the word thesaurusete, okay? And the word treasures is the word thesaurus. Did you see that? that? Those two words are the same root word in the Greek. So what's Jesus getting at here? Jesus is telling us to not store up the things that we store up. On earth, you see. So, so treasure is not just our money. It's anything that we store up, right? It, it's where we put our time. It's where we put our attention. It's where we put our energy. It's anything that we collect, that we store. And Jesus is telling us to not store up these things on earth. And look what he says here. If we store them on earth, they will not last. Now, before we get into this, how many of you remember Y2K? Did, did you ever, uh, were you guys a little afraid when that came around? Do you remember what happened? And for those of you who are too young to remember that, basically they were telling us that something might go wrong with the computers that they had invented, invented 50 years earlier. That, that some people didn't think about the fact that, that 2000 would get here. I don't really understand that, but that's what they were saying. And that all the computers were going to malfunction. And, and, you know, at the very best, we might have a few days where food distribution would be interrupted. You know, at the very worst, the world would end, right? We've heard that before. And, and Christy worries a little bit more than me, right? Look at her. She's rolling her eyes again. <laughs> this is pick on you day. That's right. But she worries a little bit more than me. So, quite honestly... We began to store up, right? Store up some stuff in our pantry. And every time we go to the grocery store, we'd buy a little bit extra. Now, we laugh about it now, right? But at the time, it seemed like maybe that's not a bad idea, right? So were we wrong by storing up stuff for the future? Were we wrong by, by stocking our cupboards with food? Now, Jesus here, look what he says. And he gives us a why we are not to store up our, our treasures on earth. He tells us that the things that we store up on earth will be subject to corruption. Now, again, I'm not saying that we should never store up anything. I mean, how many of you have food in your pantry right now? Right? You're storing it, aren't you? How many of you have more than one outfit in your closet? Right? You're storing stuff, right? So it's okay to store it, but we need to realize that the stuff that we store on earth is corruptible, right? It's going to be destroyed at one point. And Jesus' words here uh, remind us of that. Now, I want to show you a verse out of Proverbs real fast because I want you to see this. Proverbs tells us, Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its waves and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler. Yet it stores its provisions in summer and gathers its food at harvest. So, Solomon reminds us that we are to be like the ant, right? We are to be, to be wise. We are to prepare for the future. But our preparing for the future, we, we need to have kind of a limited view of that. Jesus isn't telling us to never store up anything. Jesus isn't telling us, look, don't have a savings account or don't get life insurance. I mean, those things are important. If we're responsible, we need to do that on some level. But we need to realize that the things that we put in those places are subject to corruption. They are temporary. And the words that Jesus uses here, he says, where moth and rust destroy... Now, I don't know about you, but I don't worry too much about moths anymore, do you? I, mean, I remember when I was a kid, I used to go to my great-grandmother's house, and I'd open the closet door, and the whiff, the smell would be what? Mothballs. Do you remember that? How many of you have mothballs in your closet now? You don't have to raise your hand, right? Not too many of us. Because we don't really worry about that. Our houses are tightly sealed nowadays, and, and we don't worry about that too much. But the word moth, in, in Jesus' day, the moths would get in, and they would... They would 
put the holes in the clothes of, of people, right? And the word rust is an interesting word. In the original language, the word rust means to eat away at something. So you get this, this image of like termites or, or beetles eating away at something. And, and the etymology of this word is in time, it began to mean corrosion, which I think rust is a good translation there. Because if you go out and look at my car, you'll see rust on the side of it, right? It's eating away at my car, right? So, the things of this earth, the things that the treasures that we place in earthly storehouses are going to be subject to corrosion, where moth and rust destroy. And, and then Jesus says this also, where thieves break in and steal. Now, before we do that, I want to I show you another verse here out of Luke chapter 12. Jesus tells us this, Then he said to them, Watch out, be on guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. I'll let Will put that up there. Now, now what's Jesus saying here? Jesus is kind of, kind of balancing this. We need to understand as Christians that if we place our stuff in earthly storehouses, they're going to be subject to corruption. And Jesus also says to watch out. Because the more stuff that we have stored up, the more dangerous it is. And the more likely it's going to lead to greed. So, again, nothing wrong with having some stuff stored up. But if we have too much stuff, we could end up kind of thinking that life is all about the stuff that we've stored up, right? And it kind of has to do with our hearts going there, which we're going to talk about in just a minute here. So Jesus isn't telling us to not store up, but he's telling us that the things that we store up will be subject to corruption. And the second thing he says is it will be subject to thieves, where thieves break in and steal. Now the word to break in here actually means to dig into something. And in Jesus' day, if you were going to break into a house, you would dig through that house, right? The house was usually made out of either straw or mud or clay, and you would dig through it in order to break in. A uh, translation for today might be thieves would disarm our security systems, right? And break our windows. That would be more uh, in line with how we think about that. But anything that can be stolen, anything that will rust, anything that will corrupt, anything that one day will kind of fade away or be taken away, that is an earthly storehouse. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute, the difference between the two. But Jesus gives us instructions here. He says, look, the things that you think that are grand and glorious, right? The antique store with all the stuff in there. One day, one day that, that was all valuable stuff, right? One day somebody went into a department store and bought that. Paid good money for it, right? But now it's just sitting there collecting dust. One day the things that you think are secure will be gone. Thieves will break in and steal them. And then very quickly, Jesus offers advice about storing our treasures. Look what he tells us here. And again, I want to just point out the word treasure there. The word treasure is the word thesaurus. That, that's the Greek word for it. And so in 1852, when Roger collected a bunch of words, do you remember this? What did he, what did he, what did he admit in 1852? A what? A thesaurus, right? That's what he called it. A thesaurus. It's a collection. It's a storehouse. It has nothing to do with money, does it? It's just a collection of, of something. That's the word that's used here. And, and so our treasures are the things that we collect. When I was a kid, I used to collect baseball cards. Anybody used to collect baseball cards? Or do, you, do anybody still collect baseball cards? I've got some pretty good baseball cards. I, I inherited some from my dad. I went to my grandmother's attic and found some old baseball cards. I found a, a 1968 Mickey Mantle card. Worth probably something, right? I, I've got a Mark McGuire rookie card. A Pete Rose rookie card. Pretty good cards, right? But when I was a kid, I used to love to collect baseball cards. I didn't need more baseball cards. But I'd go to the store and I'd buy a pack. You remember it was kind of in a little wrapper and you wouldn't know what was in there. You'd buy it and you'd pick one out and you'd go home. And you'd open them up and you would see the cards, the cards that you got. And I would add them to my collection. And then I would get more and add them to my collection. They're still there, right, Christy? We need to, we need to throw them out, right? They're all in this, this junk drawer, right? But that's what I would collect as a kid. But we're all collecting something, isn't it? Aren't we? We're all kind of working toward something in life. And Jesus tells us to direct our collections. He doesn't tell us to not collect. He tells us, look, collect in the right place. Look what he says in verse 20. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven 
where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. Do you see how he goes at it there? Don't store up on earth, but store up in heaven. I mean, he uses the same words there. Because the things in heaven won't corrupt. The things in heaven can't be stolen. Now, now think about that for a minute. What does that mean, store up for ourselves treasures in heaven? I mean, the, he the word heaven in Scripture is used over and over again. Sometimes it's translated as sky or air, but many times it's just simply translated as heaven. Well, how do we do that? How do we get our stuff in heaven? I don't think that FedEx delivers there, do they? I, I don't think that we can take our stuff and actually put it there physically. So, so how does this work out? Now, it's interesting in Scripture, as you read Scripture... You discover that there is a, a constant tension between the things of this earth and the things of heaven. There's, there's a contrast between the two. And, and many times Jesus talks about this kingdom of heaven in light of the kingdom of the earth. Look, look when Jesus goes out to preach, we read here in Matthew chapter 4 verse 17. Jesus' preaching is this. Repent for the kingdom of what? Heaven is near. So there's this kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of the earth. And they are in contrast to one another. Now, as we look at this text in scripture, we are we're kind of given a clue, aren't we? Uh, uh, the difference between the things of heaven and the things of earth. Jesus says the things of this earth will be subject to moth and rust and thieves. Okay? So just kind of put that test to it, okay? What is it that you're storing up? Can it be stolen? Can it corrupt? Can, can bugs get in and eat it away? I mean, if it's that, then it's on earth, right? And if it's somewhere, and I'm not talking about just a nice, you know, safe place, but I'm saying if this is some, there's no way that this thing could ever corrupt. There's no way that this thing could ever be stolen. There's nothing that anyone could ever do to take it away. Perhaps that is in the kingdom of heaven, right? And there are things like that. Things that will outlive you. Things that in many ways you, you can't put your finger on, you know. Those are the things of heaven. So you got the things of earth and the things of heaven. And Jesus tells us to put our, to put our stuff, our treasures, our storehouses, kind of in the realm of Jesus. In the realm of the imperishable. In the realm of heaven. I think that's the best way to put it. Now, here's the cool part, and I think this is really the, the application for you and me in verse 21. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. I think this is the why. That's why Jesus wants our stuff. Now, we're in, this, we're in this stewardship series here. For those of you who might be here for the first time today, this is the last Sunday that we're in this. We've been talking about stewardship now. for This is the sixth week we've been talking about this. And the reality is... God doesn't need our stuff, does he? I mean, God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. God doesn't need our money. God doesn't need our time. He doesn't need our energy. He, he can do it without us, okay? But God desperately wants our hearts, doesn't he? He wants our hearts to be in his kingdom. And he knows that if we will place our treasure, the things that we store up, our collections, wherever we place it, our hearts will gravitate toward it. And God deeply wants relationship with you and me. And so that's why he tells us to place our treasures there. I love how one scholar puts it. And the scholar puts it this way. Materialism. And you know what materialism is. That's about storing up treasures on earth. It tethers our hearts to the earth. Now, I don't know about you, but, uh, or how techni technologically savvy you are, but that word tether is used a lot today in advertising, right? And people tether their laptops to their cell phones, right? And, and what does that mean, if you tether your laptop to your cell phone? Some of you are glazing over right now, I can see it, right? It, it means that you're hooking your laptop up to your cell phone, and your laptop is dependent on your cell phone for an internet connection, right? If the, if the laptop doesn't have the cell phone, it, it won't be able to access the internet. In other words, it's hooked to it. They are hooked together. And, and when we are focused on the things of this earth, when we're focused on material things, we're focused on the stuff in the earthly realm, our heart becomes tethered to that stuff. We become hooked to it. And our focus is all on that kind of stuff. Now, 
I'm a pastor and, and uh, people come to me sometimes and they say things like, you know, I really want to follow God. I really want to pray more. I really want to read the Bible more, but I just can't stay focused on the things of God. I just get distracted. You know, you, you can't really have your heart in the things of God if your treasure's not there, can you? You can't really place your, 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 your life in the realm of Jesus if all your stuff is somewhere else. You see, Jesus knows how we naturally work. Now, again, we, we're in the series on stewardship, and, you know, one application of this, it has to do with our money. You know, and I believe that our checkbooks do direct our hearts. Do you agree with me? Where we place our money, there our hearts will be, right? So if we place our money, you know, with the, with the basketball team, right, or a soccer club, our hearts kind of go there, don't they? We want to go to the games, we want to be a part of that, right? If we place it, you know, those of you parents who are, who are writing, you know, tuition checks for a college, <laughs> part of your heart's at that college, right? Because your checkbooks go there. That's how that works. It just works that way. So yeah, there is the application of money. There is the application that where we put our money, our hearts will naturally gravitate toward that place. But at the same time, it has to do with more than our money. It has to do with our energy. It has to do with our time. It has to do with where we, where we focus our time and our attention. And, and if we're all the time placing our energy into something, our hearts will gravitate toward those things. Where, where do you put your heart? Or where do you put your treasure, your stuff? Is it in the things of heaven or is it in the things of the earth? You know, we watch a lot of TV in our world today. We watch a lot of YouTube clips. We consume a lot of media, don't we? I mean, that's the world we live in. And in fact, we're told that life is really about consuming media, right? And, and you know, newspapers and movies and books, those things are all good. And TV shows, and, and can be fun, right? But if we spend all of our leisure time sitting in front of a TV, guess where our heart's going to be? It's going to be there. Maybe God would be calling some of us this morning to take our treasure, our time, our attention, our attention and our money... And to place it in the things of God. Certainly, our checkbooks and our calendars direct our, our treasure. Wouldn't you agree? We're collecting something. We're storing up something. Those are two things that are very tangible, I think. And I think we can ask ourselves, you know, we say we love God. We say we are all about the kingdom of God. But if we pulled out our calendar and our checkbooks and we looked at them, how many of us would our calendar and our checkbooks say that we love God? And you see, those things, that, that's our treasure. And Jesus says, your heart will gravitate toward your treasure. I've gotten way off my notes here, so I've got I've to catch up. What is, wh where, is our, where is our treasure? For some, it is media consumption. You know, we can't even sit at a table for five minutes without looking at our phones, right? Without texting somebody or looking at uh, what's going on on Twitter or Facebook. And we wonder why our hearts remain there. For some of us, it's about building wealth or building assets, right? Building bank accounts. And we spend all of our time and our energy trying to figure out how we can make that more and more and more. And we wonder why our hearts remain there. For some, it's exercise. Now, don't get me wrong. It's a good thing to exercise. I love to exercise. We should exercise. It's good for us. But for some, it's all consuming. That's all we can think about. And we spend all of our time exercising. And we wonder why our hearts are there. For others, it's approval or notoriety. We do all that we can to please people. And there's nothing wrong with helping people, is there? Nothing wrong with wanting people to like us. But if all of our time and all of our energy is all about pleasing people, and we wonder why our hearts remain there. Maybe this morning as I'm preaching, you're having a hard time staying focused on what I'm saying. Your mind is wandering off somewhere. And you have to keep going, oh, pulling it back into here. Maybe that's where your heart is. Because the things that you daydream about, the things that consume your mind in the most quiet moments, maybe that's a good indication that that's where your heart is. Let me challenge each of us this morning with this scripture. 
Where is our treasure? Is it earthly? Is it where moth and rust and thieves will take away? Or is it eternal? Will it outlast our lifetime? Maybe this morning God would be prompting you in some way. As you and I have sat under the scripture this morning. Maybe God would prompt you. You know, I, I need to take this place, this storehouse. And I need to redirect my resources to a different place. This morning, as God is challenging you, maybe it's with your money. Maybe some of you realize, you know what, I, I say that I love God, but my checkbook doesn't reflect that. Maybe there needs to be a change in the way in which you direct your resources. For some, it might be your time. You know, your calendar's full of all, everything that you want to do, but you're not really giving any time to anybody else. Maybe it would be some adjustments there that you begin to invest in the community of God. Whatever way that God might be calling you, may we each respond to that so that our hearts... I mean, that's really what it's all about, isn't it? God wants our hearts to be in his kingdom. God wants our hearts to be on him. May we respond to him in that way. As we respond this morning, as Matt comes, um, it's an opportunity for you to respond in whatever way you'd like to respond. Maybe this morning... You'd want to come and pray. The altar is open. You can come do that on your own. If you'd like for me to pray with you, I'll be standing here. Perhaps uh, you've been attending here for some time now and, and you want to become a, a part of this body. Uh, now would be the time that you would come and present yourself and say, I'd like to join this church. And so any of those things that you'd like to do, let's all stand together and sing.